Hi everybody, this is Mr. B with uh, Hayfield Secondary School. Um, uh, this is a video about how to use a web-based application called SketchUp for Schools. SketchUp for Schools is the web-based version of SketchUp Pro. Uh, SketchUp Pro is a traditional application that requires download and installation um, on the local computer, whether laptop or desktop. And we found that to be very problematic in these times of people working at home, getting a clean download all the way to the laptop, <clears throat> getting it installed properly, just wasn't working out uh, very often. Uh, it's only about like 50, 60% of the time. So we're gonna go with SketchUp Web. Um, I've been using it, I really like it. Um, actually, um, I think it's easier to use than SketchUp Pro. Um, and uh, I'm gonna demo it for you. This is what we call a screenshot tutorial. So you're going to be seeing exactly what's on my screen, exactly what I'm doing, and uh, uh, click by click, and I'll be narrating it, of course. And the great thing about these videos is that you can watch them again and stop them and rewind them whenever you need a little refresher. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, I've got to go ahead and switch to my screen. And what I'm hoping you're seeing is my Schoology classroom, your Schoology classroom, is going to look a lot like this. And first of all, um, for I have created in the Schoology classrooms um, this uh, 3D design and modeling folder, okay? When you're going to be working with SketchUp, that's where I'm going to want you to go. Now, right now, there are just three things in there. I will be putting more assignments in there, but these are the three, three things that are gonna get you started, okay? First of all, there is a link to the app itself. So a link to SketchUp for Schools. You just go in there, click the link, boom, it'll take you right to SketchUp for Schools. Secondly, there is a folder in here that contains shortcut keys. We'll talk more about that later. The shortcut keys are extremely handy um especially um if you're doing a pretty long drawing and you have to keep switching between um <clears throat> different tools <clears throat> rather than clicking on the toolbar you can use shortcut keys to make that much much faster much more efficient i think you'll really like that and then of course this is where this video is getting stored i'll be showing you this when you're in class it'll get stored there okay so let's just go straight to the app and see what it looks like so if you go in here, click on the app, this is SketchUp coming up now. This is new. Um, <clears throat> we had some problems with SketchUp uh, for schools uh, logging in properly, but this seems to be working just great as of uh, October 14th, about nine o'clock at night. Um, and so here it is. So all you're gonna do is click on sign in, with, sign in with Google. Everybody has a Google account. Actually, Google owns SketchUp. So there's a very close relationship there, which works really, really well for us. You can see it'll show you some accounts. Now, I just have one Google account. Um, this is the fcpsschools.net account. This is mine. You have the same one. It'll pop up. Just click on it. <clears throat> and if you're logged into your laptop, you're logged into Google, okay, boom, you're already going to be there. Now, this is just showing what it does, which is really cool. When you go into SketchUp for Schools, because um, SketchUp for Schools knows about Google and knows about Google Drive and all of that stuff, it automatically populates my screen with all of the SketchUp files that it found on Google Drive. So you're going to be keeping your files on Google Drive. That way, SketchUp for Schools just automatically finds them. Um, you can just click directly on any one of these, all right? Or you could actually click on open and, and open up a specific one in a specific folder. What I'm gonna do just for demo purposes right now, I'm gonna click on this one I've created called Demo UM2. UM2 stands for the 3D printer that we're using. That stands for UltiMaker 2. So you'll see why um, I called it UM2, UltiMaker 2. 3D template. A template is simply a starting point. It's kind of like a blank canvas, if you will, but it's a canvas that has been sized properly for the printer that we are using. 
So we're using Ultimaker 2, and I've given you a blank canvas that is the correct size for the Ultimaker 2 printer. So let's just open it up. Just click, boom, okay? Now, um, you see my screen changing right now. What I am doing is I'm using the scroll button on my mouse to zoom in and zoom out. We'll talk more about these features in just a second. Some basic changing your view features. I want to talk about this interface a little bit first, okay? This interface is actually quite a bit easier than the SketchUp Pro interface. And they've tried to make it an all icon-based interface. So over here on the left is your toolbar, okay? It's pretty simple. <clears throat> You'd think there might be need to be more tools. And there are because when you click on one of these items on the toolbar, all right, if it has that little arrow next to it, <clears throat> that means it's going to expand out to more uh, options. So when I clicked on the paint bucket, which stands for filling, okay, just like uh, Windows and, I mean, Word and stuff like that, or uh, Google Doc, <clears throat> it actually has two more menus underneath of it. Under the pencil here, the line, I can draw straight lines, curvy lines under this shape here. Uh, that's to draw, do what they call a three-point arc. There are actually other shapes here, okay? <clears throat> we'll get more into more of these. So anyway, that's how the interface works. You can click on each one of these, and there's actually more items underneath of that first picture, okay? It takes a little getting used to, but those shortcut keys I talked about a little earlier are going to really help you a lot. So again, these are move icons under the uh, four-way arrow. Don't try to memorize all this stuff right now. You're not going to memorize anything. What you're going to do is you're going to learn by doing. Okay, I'm going to have you do a... Glad the background news, news stop, noise stopped. That was my uh, heater that's running here in the basement. It's a lot better now. Um, <clears throat> you're going to learn by doing, so don't try to memorize this stuff, all right? Um, the next icon is a tape measure. So there's a bunch of measurement tools underneath of the tape measure. Um, these, this footprint one, um, this is actually to change your perspectives of how you're looking at the model. In other words, the footprints mean you can kind of walk around the model, if that makes sense. Makes more sense when you're doing architectural drawings. <clears throat> and this orbit tool here is also a change your camera view, okay? Imagine we have a camera right now. This is a really good place to start. We have a camera right now looking at this cube, okay? You're like, what is that cube? Well, what that cube is, that cube are, is the dimensions of the Ultimaker 2 3D printer, okay? This guy right here, let me show it to you. Uh, I don't know, it's my camera. Let me switch, let me switch. Okay, this guy, okay? The Ultimaker 2 3D printer, all right? So I made a template that is exactly as big as the inside of this printer, all right? So that's what that is. I'm switching back to, to screen mode right now. So that's why it looks like that. So whatever you draw inside of that... Um, this template right here means it's, it will it will be uh, small enough to print on this 3D printer. It's a pretty big 3D printer, but um, wanted you to know the limitations there, okay? So this is a good place to, to uh, start. So this orbit tool, see these two little arrows chasing each other? If I hold down my mouse button and move this around, and this is really a simple but important concept to understand, I can turn this 3D object around so I can see all the different sides. Well, why is that important? Well, it is important because we are not drawing in two dimensions, okay? Remember, we're drawing in three dimensions. And all three-dimensional objects, I'm just, my phone, okay, has a, you know, has um, height, width, and depth, okay? And to truly see what the phone looks like, all right, 
I have to be able to turn the phone around so I can see all the different sides of the phone. Well, that is exactly what you have to be able to do in a 3D CAD program like SketchUp, okay? And so that's what we're doing. We're using the orbit tool so I can see the different sides of the object. Might make a little more sense in just one second, all right? So there's my space. Let's draw something. We talked about the menu bar over here. It's all icon based. Um, this is our template that we're going to draw on. And excuse me, I had a little coffee there. Um, I'm just going to draw something. I'm going to draw a really simple shape. And this is a great time for you to do this too. So as I'm doing this video, you can follow along. And when I show you how to do something, then you just pause the video and you do it. Okay, learning by doing, okay? So I want to draw a cube, just a cube, all right? Nothing fancy, just a little cube. <clears throat> remember that when we talk about doing, and remember I, I, we had all those videos in the, uh, that I showed you and I explained very carefully um, that 3D printing is really 2D printing, layers of 2D, prints, slices, if you will, stacked up on top of one after the other. And you might have thought, well, okay, I get it. That's how it prints it. But why do I need to know that if I just say, just I'm draw this thing and, and print it? Okay, let the printer figure that out. Well, you need to know that because that's how you draw also. Okay, so hopefully this is all going to make sense in about two seconds and you're going to go, oh, I get it. Okay, so I'm zooming in with my scroll button here a little bit. <clears throat> and there's this hand tool too. Think of this hand. You see that the, my pointer changes to a hand. Think of a hand as like, this is a piece of paper and I can slide the paper around uh, on the table. So I'm just changing my view. All right, so let me get back to it. So I want to draw a cube. So what is a cube when you think about the very first layer of a cube? I want to draw a cube. Well, it's just a square, right? So let's go ahead and draw that two-dimensional square. So here it is, or rectangle, I should say, not a square. Well, I wanted to draw it like that. That really not what I wanted to do. I'm going to get rid of this. We'll talk about why it did that in a minute. That's not what I wanted to do. I just want to draw a square down on this bottom layer. Okay. Let me get that straight. Here we go. All right. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. I didn't want it to do that. And sometimes that's exactly what you want it to do. But anyway, so I drew the square. I drew the first layer of this cube. All right. It's two dimensions. It's not three dimensions. Well, how can I make it three dimensional? Well, I can make it three dimensional by adding additional layers on top of this first layer. Well, in effect, we're taking that first layer and we're going to pull it up and add more layers to it. And there is a tool over here. You will see it. That's exactly what it looks like. It looks like we're pulling up a layer. It's like a, a square here with a arrow coming out of it. And it's actually called push pull. There's a few tools in here with it that kind of do the same thing, but for different purposes, but we're gonna keep it simple right now. I just want to pull up this two dimensional and notice it goes from gray to white, all right? It is now a three dimensional object. And then I can push and pull any of the sides, the faces it's called, of this object and change its three-dimensional properties. Oh, the other thing I should tell you right now, if you ever make a mistake with SketchUp, Control-Z is your friend. Control-Z works really great. Let's say I didn't want to do all that stuff. I'm just pressing Control-Z and you'll see it'll just back up Okay, it'll undo all the things that I did. Anyway, so there's that original square. This is a good time for you guys to draw a little rectangle on the bottom. 
and then just use the push pull tool and you see how the rectangle turns all with little dots all over it that means it's selected okay and I just pull it up now it is three-dimensional I could 3d print this be really not very interesting but I could 3d print it all right this push pull tool will push and pull any of the faces okay it goes from gray to white, indicating that is a three-dimensional object. So I hope that makes sense how I taught you that a 3D object is just two-dimensional objects stacked one on top of another, and that is how you draw as well. When you're drawing in 3D, you're always going to start with a two-dimensional shape and pull it and modify it into a three-dimensional object. Let me show you that again but let's use a slightly different shape. Um, I'm going to pick a circle. And I'm zooming in here a little bit. I'm going to do a circle on the top of the rectangle, which is now a cube. I drew a circle, okay? Not very exciting. But can we pull this two-dimensional circle up into a three-dimensional shape? Yep. So there we go. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to pull it up. Okay. I have a three-dimensional object, a cube with a cylinder coming out of it. Okay. A, a cylindrical solid. It's not just a cylinder. It's a solid. It is a three-dimensional <clears throat> object now. Notice here, whenever you have a tool that you're drawing with, a drawing tool, and it can't be used because it doesn't make sense for the object. See that little not sign that's on the screen? It says, don't even try it. It's not going to work here. Because I can't push and pull the side of a cylinder. I can do other cool things, but I can't do that. Okay? But I could over here. All right? So that's it. That's getting started. So I'm going to actually stop there. Now, you might go, Mr. B, that's really, really simple. However, um, I'm going to switch back to, oh, yeah, when you save this, <clears throat> do something up here. Just like all other uh, programs on saving stuff, you go up here. This is the main menu. Go up to Save As. Give it a name, <clears throat> like My Demo, whatever, okay? Now, it is automatically saving the file as you go. Okay, um, I should point that out to you too. So see up here, it will auto save it when you make changes, but it's always a good idea to say, yeah, I wanna save all my changes. You can also save it as a different name because if you're starting with a template uh, one day and you're doing, I don't know, a cube, and then you're starting with the template another day and you wanna do a little model of, uh, I don't know, a house. Um, you want to save it as something meaningful. And uh, so anyway, these are all your traditional new, open, save as type functions. Um, you can actually download files, <coughs> excuse me, all that stuff. We're not going to do that a whole lot. But anyway, so uh, I'm going to stop there and I'll tell you why. Let me switch back to screen mode. So what you just did, I know it might look really short, really simple, and hopefully it does look very simple to you. But what you just did was, um, first of all, we verified that you can get into SketchUp for Schools, that your login is working fine. That's pretty huge, all right? Secondly, um, you got into SketchUp and you created um, a very simple 3D model. You became a little bit familiar, familiar with the interface. Okay, just real basic shapes right now, okay? Learning by doing. The next tutorial that I'm gonna do, um, I am gonna get into some of the more advanced stuff um, about using those shortcut keys that I was talking about, using some of the more advanced shape keys, things you can do to manipulate a 3D model, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna get into that, but all this video was intended to do is to get you logged into SketchUp for Schools or SketchUp Web. I might call it either thing. Um, 
but it's, I'm talking about the same thing. SketchUp web, Sketch, SketchUp for schools. Um, get you in there and draw a simple little shape, um, get it saved, and um, that way we know we can move forward with that, okay? Um, so back to the screen real quick. When you're done with this, you can just close it. Notice I've put a, um, a shortcut, a bookmark on my toolbar. I highly recommend that. You can do the same thing just when you're in here. All right, and it says edusketchup.com. Just go over here and click on the star and create yourself a bookmark, make your life easier. All right, and when you're done with SketchUp, When you're done with SketchUp, it's saying, oh, I haven't saved changes. No, 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 yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I wanna save it. So I'm actually gonna do a file save as, and uh, click. All right, it's like anything else, save as. I'm gonna save it in my 3D printing folder. This is not rocket science here, okay? You guys know how to do this saving and it's saved and now close like any other app okay so i'm going to start stop the video here get this posted online and i'm going to do another video with some little bit more interesting stuff okay all right see you soon bye